Seven questions of the session, chopped it up with Chris Cash. This is Jonah Delay, the one and only. You are now watching Seven Questions in the Session. I'm Tap gonna in. kill this shit. Excuse my language, but I've been crying for too long. I carry niggas like Holly Berry, I'm getting Grammys. That's Holly Perry impersonating me getting paper. It's on the table, so play your hand like this is gamble. Helen Keller, I'm learning Braille, the show and tell. Dej Loaf put the burner to his tummy then and make him dance. I was really on a TV screens, gotta brag about it. I never needed nobody playing photo the leader, drinking leader. I litter on bitches who don't listen when I'm on a top. I keep them up like a baby kicking. They barely speak it, but I'm the one that's burping. Yo, it. this your one, Caddy Chris, man, and you are now watching seven questions in the session. Today I got the world Jonah Danae up in here, man. And y'all already know we finna get into this interview. First thing first, go follow the sponsors. Billionaire Hemp Wraps, treat your lungs better. Spray 420, best cardioterizer out here. And eight off the bone, men's and female oils. Come get you some so you can get you some. Appreciate you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. How you, how you doing, man? Um, I'm doing well. I'm doing real good. Um, God been with me, you know? Who my wife? We been supposed to have did this, man. What's <laughs> been going on, man? It's supposed to be knocked this out. I'm glad we finally was able to get it in, though. So, my first question always is, how did you come across the name? But I'm asking, is that the gov name? Or is that uh, your, your artist name? That's my real name. Oh, that's My first and middle name. So, you just say, I'm sticking to the, to the roots, huh? Yep. What's it? How, what made you come to the, the conclusion to have that as your artist name um i actually had a couple of stage names i came up with before i chose to stick with my real actual name um i didn't they were all corny mm -hmm. all, all of them was not sticking you know one of <laughs> i would i'm a name one of the names <coughs> it was vixen i think it was vixen it went two x's or something like that and it was inspired by one of a battle battle rappers, like a battle rapper, a female battle rapper. But no, nah, I just decided to go because that's me, you know. And I take a lot of influence from Tupac, and he went by his name, like that's raw, you know. So I just kept it. Uh, yeah, you you probably right. You good? You did keep that thing, but <laughs> all right. Well, so how did you get off into music? How did you know music was your passion? Um. So it didn't start off initially with music, like as a first thing going full force for a potential career. Um, it first started off with poetry. So I was doing, I always been a writer before anything. So I was doing a lot of poetry slams. I was doing a lot of spoken word performances at schools, talent shows, community events. And then I met a friend up in eighth grade. So I want to say like the last in middle school and we were riding the bus together. So we would write raps in our notepads from school and we would just battle them out on the bus and everybody would be like, man, you called <laughs> Jonah, man. <laughs> like, yeah, that's how I knew. Like, dang, this could like translate into rap. This can translate. I, rap is poetry, rhythm and poetry. Yeah. So, I mean, it just automatically followed and went through. So that's when I just started to put it to YouTube beats. And then after that, I was just barring. So it's crazy that you say that, right? Because one of my questions I got wrote down was, like, it seemed like it's like a lot of poetry in your music. And to say that you started off with poetry, it makes a lot of sense. And that's dope as hell. Like, you could tell it. I've uh, been around like poets coming up like you could just you just feel it all in your music no bullshit just the way you spit what you spit is just like you got that poetry G <laughs> you know but so like my my next question was I didn't know that you was 18 so how how long have you been doing music but you said eighth grade so what age was it when you decided to be like I'm gonna do some I don't want to call it rap, but I'm going to do some, some hip-hop inspired stuff, too. Mm, I feel like taking it serious, vice versa, knowing 
that I'm capable of it. Um, when I feel like I wanted to go kind of into it was maybe last year. Because before that, during middle school, I was just kind of doing it for fun, you know, because it was so much hype <laughs> at school. And um, but I feel like last year is when I started to be like, OK, I can do this, you know, and I got I got a gift. And I always had a gift. That's the, I feel like last year is when I decided to really lock in and build from it. You know, what what was that first song like? Oh, the first song. Um, I deleted it off YouTube. I did upload it to YouTube. Um, it was a YouTube beat that I did use, and I remember I took one of the raps I was writing in my notepad from battle rapping on a bus, and I utilized that to a YouTube beat, and I remember. <laughs> I went to my camera app and I ended up recording it like that with like the Bluetooth speaker playing the beat. And that was, it was actually pretty up par for my first song. Like I was saying some real stuff. What, what made you erase it then? I mean, nah, <laughs> I will probably put it back up as I, <coughs> as I grow. I feel like as I grow, yeah, I'm a, Put it back up, maybe for people to like see that. Like, dang, man, this is where she started. Yeah, no bullshit. I'm gonna raise shit off my YouTube page, and it's some old shit. Like, off, off topic, but I feel like I was the one, one of the first people doing ride in your car smoking videos, premiere music. I got videos for like 12, 14 years ago doing that. But off topic. But. Next man, I, I I see you bring up YouTube beats a couple times. So like, are you are you fucking with the YouTube beat way, or are you more so with locking in with a producer? Um, it's a tricky world dealing with YouTube beats. I will be honest with that. But however, I'm not knocking nobody who is utilizing the world of YouTube beats and the art of YouTube beats. I feel like you can use it to practice on it. Um, for sure, that's what I did. I practiced on YouTube beats, and that kind of helps you formulate a sound. Like, um, I feel like the best bet to go for me personally was to lock in with my dear friend and producer. Um, my dear friends, actually, you know, and I feel like you got to find them people to really own in your craft with. That way they know your sound and you not getting, you know, flipped over or you're not in a risk field of being sued, you know. So I, I just feel like that's a tricky world to be in with YouTube beats. Yeah, Yo, this your old Caddy Chris, man. This is a quick break from this session brought to you by Holy Trinity Financial. Now, if y'all watch this show enough, y'all know I'm always preaching financial literacy, and it ain't never too late to get your credit together. And now is the time. So, Holy Trinity is offering a once in a lifetime chance for people just like you who tired of the scammers, who tired of paying all this money to the credit repair people and not getting no results. They offering a package just for y'all. All y'all gotta do is call this number below or hit the website. Tell them Caddy Chris told you to call. You will get 50% off your first month of credit repair service on behalf of your wealth. So man, like I said, Holy Trinity Financials. I would never post or promote anything on my show that I didn't believe in. This is not just a pay ad. This is a actual customer talking to y'all. I was one of their first clients and they got my credit exactly where it needs to be. So again, call this number below, hit the website, tell Holy Trinity Financial that Caddy Chris told y'all to call and get 50% off y'all first month of credit repair service on your wall. And back to this interview, man. When was it, or what song was it where you felt like you found your sound? Uh, I would say, <laughs> I want to say my single Three Warnings. That is a three transitional song. Um, there's a part where I'm real gritty, you know, and that's that style of 
all my hardcore influences of artists oops, of of artists I had and um the second transition was me slowing it down and being me and then the third was like the flower blossoming you know <laughs> if that makes sense like that was me like I'm real lyrical I will say that you know I put a lot of word and raw material within my art so I would say the three warnings was where I kind of feel like okay this is my song mm -hmm. like what what's your brand of music called right? what would you say it is you know people say trap music people say they got grit and music, whatever it is. What would your brand of music be? Um, <laughs> I don't, I can't really put it in a specific category. I feel like I found my sound for sure. Um, however, I feel like there's so much to come with being versatile and being the poetress I am and including the lyricism, the optimistic side of being, <laughs> of being like just a lyricist. There's not a specific um, category I could put on it, you know? I can, I've, I'm for sure capable of being- I do some of everything. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just a little bit of everything, like, but my sauce into it. Uh, do you do you feel like you get the love you deserve from the city right now? Well, I would say there's not too many people that have caught on yet. Um, and I feel like on my end, I haven't done too much. Or I'm, I would say I want to up my work ethic until, you know, my people do catch on from my city. Um... I have received, you know, some support and it's so appreciated to know that, okay, you know, it's a couple of people garnering ears and attention to what I do have to say, you know, because I have a message and, you know, when you have a message, you want it to be heard. So I would say people just ain't caught on yet, you know? Oh, well, shit, they will. And shit, you... You got a lot of time to get <laughs> get on that shit. No bullshit. I how I came across her was I seen her flyer at the gas station, and that shit reminded me of me because when I was rapping, I used to do the same shit. Like you gonna see me, so that's how I, I came across you as an artist. So man, keep doing shit like that. People people see that shit. People pay attention. People start checking out. Like. When it comes to your your writing process, though, like, do you freestyle or do you write? Kind of both. It'll be as I'm writing. It'll just be I can I feel like I internalize different conversations that I've had in the past right. with people, and I can take something that oh this stroke me in this conversation I had with you. Let me write this down or um. It could be like a somebody talking in the background and something they say a fly over my head like ooh that's a bar let me put that in there so it, that's kind of my writing process I would take certain lines I write up in my notepad and just stick it through with different rhymes and um, metaphors and all that you know that's my writing process I take from my environment and my open world. So earlier you mentioned Tupac. Like, what what other artists influenced you? Influenced you coming up? Yeah. So that was him for sure. Um, Three Six Mafia, for sure. You know. <laughs> you know. Um, my uncles used to play them, and it was loud, blasting them, like the heavy bass, the all the punchlines and stuff like that. Um, I grew up a little bit on a lot of soul, for sure. Uh, Marvin Gaye. Um, the Gap Band is a good one, too. Like, 
you said Jill Scott in that verse. You bumping oh. Jill Scott. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of Jill Scott, my the, mom. The, the yeah, version. a little bit of Jill Scott too. Like, just people who ain't even rappers too. Writers, uh, I'm influenced by Langston Hughes, Maya Angelou, uh, John Singleton is not an uh, author or a rapper, but he is somebody I take influence from because he, he is, a, his art. you know, yeah, you know, I take from creators and people out there that aren't even in that rapper category too. But uh, Tupac was definitely, is definitely a huge influence. No bullshit. See, I'm an 80s baby, so like, I was alive when Tupac was in his prime, so you can't even tell me no other rapper to me better than Pac. No bullshit. Like you said, Pac, 3 6, No Limit. I grew up on all, all, all that right there. Sorry. So when you got here, you told me you was an author. Yep. Tell, tell me about the book that you writing or what? Finna put it out? Yeah. Um, I actually have it right here. Well, the first installment of... It's a collage and a collection of poems I did. Um, original, all written by me. It's called Beyond Thin Walls. It's now on sale. They are limited. But um, I definitely want to continue to write more stories, especially books. Um just an all around just creator for sure like I definitely feel like I want to utilize each and every skill within me as a just lyricist you know so I was like why not release a book um so yeah get y'all one it's definitely out for sale like yeah where can they get the book at oh yeah um just hit me up on Instagram at Jonah Dene so that's J-O-N-A-H-D-E-N-A-E um, I'm also working on my website too so just stay tuned to all my socials and that way you can like I don't know just like order on my website when it is up and boom so yeah all right. so artist uh, poet author well, what else you trying to get into oh um, movies I want to get into acting um, I definitely see that for myself I see myself in like, acting. Um, it's a couple of people I did reach out to from the city that are producers. Um, Swift Sloan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I never met him. I, I don't know him, but I know he do all the movies, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had a couple. Well, his mo some of his m movies is on Tubi, so that's so dope to see from my city. And... I for sure, you know, want to get into that world too. Yeah, man. So if you happen to see this, man, go ahead and add her in there, man. Let her do her thing. Right. Did Did you happen to catch any of that Milwaukee, Minnesota beef stuff? Oh, I did. Yep. How, how you feel about them coming at the city now that the city side finally started to get a little shine? Um, I mean. I kind of wasn't too in it. You know, I'm always kind of focusing on me. But however, my input on it is like, it's just another factor of, we kind of just have to come together and, and stick together as a city, you know, and just keep doing our thing, you know? That kind of, I just feel like it goes to show that we're doing something, you know, for sure. Like, we breaking down doors, that's all that is. But I feel like it's no hate that we should have against each other. I think we should all be supporting one another. What up y'all? It's Jonah Dene, the one and only. Tap into my single In Due Time. My music video, my first ever music video is now out and it's so, so much to come. Really gonna stick it with you. Just tap in, man, bitches, Jonah like Dene. Said to you. I gotta talk my shit, don't really care who listen. Who put these bitches on thick and they cause attention with me? Like how written, they'll lie about if they really did it. I pledge allegiance, give us some type of independence. Pay the count if it count the bitches out of it. I get out of pockets, cocky bitches don't understand the menace. And may a man can't 
lifted, I'm really gifted Can't get them off me, I'm the addiction, I'm real wicked You bitches trying, she ain't to go, a real cliffer I throw a joke and get in my lap, see who gets it, yeah From they TV screens, to they fucking radio, bitches hate to see it Bitches bowing down to me, they get to caper nicking And that's down on the knee, making history This is sacramental, I'm sentimental, I second guess them I know they ain't bout it, can settle for niggas who settle at the bottom With bitches who bottle feeders, but give a top to niggas who pop a bottle Instead of popping the collar, bitches pop a rossi See, they talking proper to me. I carry velocity and a bunch of problems. She kick you palmer, kick you knocked on alarm. Keep it like a firearm without any precaution. She on menopause. Let me have you take a walk in my park. Like this is Jill Scott talking to y'all. Coretta Scott, get correct when I talk. I camouflage like the Obamas. I'm off the wall. Park the car in her garage. She call it a walk. I fuck around and have her lying, touching the ground. That's looking a nine. I'm talking with God. I'm coming from mines. I'm running for miles. Ain't touching my drive. This really my time. And niggas know not to mention the grind. And niggas know that I'm really the goat when. Yo, this your old Caddy Chris, man. This is a quick break from this interview to let y'all know to please subscribe. Like the channel, man. Tell your people to follow. Tell your girl to follow so you man's to follow man get us some subscribers get us some followers share an interview yeah right here you see it seven questions in a session instagram youtube facebook you can follow my personal page at caddy ceo underscore chris follow the channel seven questions in a session back to this interview all right one person from here one person from the industry that you will want to work with in the future Mm. First, I would say a person from our city, I wouldn't mind, and I would love to work with, is, oh, uh, <laughs> I would say Shaddai. Um, she's not too, you know, huge, but she's real dope. She's real, like, She's lyricist, you know, she talks a, a lot about, you know, just her world. You know, I, I love that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, there's another, I know you only said one. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but there's another one. Her name is Zed Kenzo. Zed Kenzo? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, She's, I heard a little bit of her music. I think that would be like a cool collaboration. <laughs> cool <laughs> collaboration. <laughs> like, yeah, she's real cool. Like, she reminds me of that feel of Rico Nasty. I don't know if anybody kind of. I definitely heard of it. Yeah, 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 she's cool. Like, uh, I love her style. I love her aura, you know, as a lady in her field or what she's doing. You know, she's her. I love that. And then I will say, Industry. I would say Lil Wayne. Don't, don't bullshit. I just said something about Lil Wayne on Instagram, literally, before you walked in here. I just said something about Wayne. Definitely one of my favorite artists ever. Bullshit. Yeah, so who your favorite artist from Milwaukee? Uh. <laughs> who you listen to the most? Um. If it's yourself, say that. <laughs> nah. Um, it's so many that I enjoy listening to and watching from here. Man. <laughs> um, man. I mean, I will say... I I can't really name like somebody specific because it's so many of y'all that I appreciate of being in the field of your own lane, you know. And um, yeah, like I'm not trying to be like a sweet cake. <laughs> like I don't want to hurt nobody' feelings. Just like me, I listen to some of everybody. Too, yeah, so you know, like, I listen to everything. Like I'm just a fucking music head, so it'd be like that, man. But what you? We ain't gonna worry about no other artists there right now. Why don't you kind of talk about the merch you're selling? Yeah, um, I am selling merch. I got, so far I have hoodies in any color, any size. And my logo is actually right on the back, right there. Um, yep, I got hats too. So I got like caps and all that. You know, I'm just trying to work on getting it out there more and 
I'm just working on ways to profit myself and, you know, just push myself to the business side of things too. But um, that is out and you can book your own order through a link, uh, <laughs> a link through my Instagram. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so, how do you feel about the the Milwaukee music scene in general? You feel like we're gonna be able to carry this for a while with the world paying attention? For sure. For sure. I think it's a lot of work ethic here that's so strong. Like, we definitely utilize TikTok. For sure. No bullshit. I would say that. Um, like, TikTok has been a platform that we have been utilizing. I need to, you know, amp up my skills within, they call it content creator. Um, but yeah, I feel like we as a city can definitely keep that momentum that we have built up and leave behind such a legacy to where they look at us as a city of nothing but art and creativity. No oh, bullshit, it's so much dope music being made right now in this city. And man, I appreciate the fuck out of it. Cause I get to promote the artist who has the city ear and the artists who need the city need to hear and I get to combine them both here on this show. So I feel like the walking music scene is everything right now. No bullshit. So and I'm glad people be actually wanting to come on the show. I get spent a lot, but <laughs> it, it happens, man. I don't even take it personal. It just be like that. Uh what what's some of your goals with this with this being an artist thing? I ain't gonna say being a a rapper. What's, what's good with what's your goals with being an artist? Um, to leave behind such an impact. Like my biggest goal is to be remembered as one of the most striving, the most like man. Like I want you to hear my voice on the track and just know that was legendary. Or that's, man, that's Jonah Denae. That's not something that can be touchable, you know? Um, like, my biggest goal is to touch so many different souls out there with my words. I want you to feel everything I'm talking about every time I rap or every time I write um, or every time you see me. For sure, I just want to be able to touch as many people as I can. Oh, bullshit. Last question I got for you. What does Milwaukee mean to you? Milwaukee is everything. Milwaukee is home, born and raised here. It's something I would never run from, you know? Um, it's just something that's been like my own to my craft. Like, and it's where it all started. Like I can't ever uh, lean back on the city at all. You know, this is like a home that's full of stuff that you just learn from for sure. You learn, you go through trials and tribulations here. You see a lot here. Um, you gotta find your own way here for sure. And own into that and stick to it. You know, like I would say Milwaukee means work. Milwaukee means art. Milwaukee means black. Oh, For sure. And it definitely means hustle. Yeah. And God find <laughs> you a hustle around this motherfucker <laughs> for you to not eat. And it's thunder, right on cue. All right, man. So, oh, one last question I forgot to ask. I, I meant, knew I, I was forgetting something. If a person never heard your music before, what song would you send them to to win them over? Hmm. Uh, ah. <laughs> I gotta say, I gotta say three warnings. Um, Cause as I mentioned in the beginning, that is the song that is like, damn. 
<laughs> like dang, she she uh she was she was hitting it, you know. Mm-hmm. All right, so this part of the interview where the camera on you, uh, social media, what you got coming next? Shout out to camera on you, man. Yeah, I got so much to come. Um, I definitely have an upcoming single coming out soon. It will be titled Last Woman Standing. Uh, and man, I went in. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Please check me out. All platforms, Jonah Dene. So that's J-O-N-A-H-D-E-N-A-E. Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes. Merch out. Uh-huh. Book out. <laughs> um, performances soon, too. Like. Um, I definitely got some shows coming up, but you have to stay tuned to like my socials and stuff like that because that's where I'm active at. That's where I share all my information. But everything Jonah the name. Yeah, bad shit. And I'm your woke caddy Chris. Thank you all for watching Seven Questions in a Session. Again, go follow the sponsors, Billionaire Hemp Rats. Uh, we've been recording for almost 30 minutes. You can see it lasts the whole interview. Uh, Spray 420, best cardio to rise around here. I'm telling you, this is so good. The police put it in my paperwork because they couldn't find nothing. Because it's spray 420. Man, in eight off the bone, men and female oils. This is not no sex oil. This is cologne and perfume. <laughs> and uh, all proceeds go to my world trouble, man. You buy any oils that's going on his books. Uh, and we see you later. Uh, again, subscribe to the channel. Help me turn this hobby into a hustle. And uh, see you next time, man. I'm finna kill this shit. Excuse my language, but I've been crying for too long. I carry dingus like Holly Berry. I'm getting Grammys. That's Holly Perry impersonating me getting paper. It's on the table, so play your hand like this is a gamble. Helen Keller, I'm learning Braille. It's show and tell. Dave Loaf put the burner to his tummy then and make him dance. I was really on their TV screens. Gotta brag about it. I never needed nobody playing photo the leader, drink a leader. I litter on bitches who don't listen when I'm on they top. I keep them up like a baby kicking. They barely speak it, but I'm the one that's birthing niggas. These bitches want birches while I'm on a purpose and I'm hustling. Fuck what they purchasing. I fucking do.